Hi guys, welcome back to this channel. I say this channel because it's actually my second one. I think most of you guys are aware of that, but I don't think I've ever said it on here, so I do have a main channel. But this is kind of like my secret channel that only the really dedicated reader pops find. But I've read the most amount of books that I've read in any month this year so far in April. I read 10 books this month. I'm filming this a little bit early, so maybe it'll end with 11 and I'll just have to tell you next month what I read. But I feel like I really got back into my groove this month with finding books that I actually like. Putting the books behind me so you can't see them. First up, How to End a Love Story by Yu Lin Kwan. First of all, I love the cover of this book. I was really, really, really excited for this book because this author is actually the director of the Beach Read movie, and she turned People We Meet on Vacation into a screenplay, both things that I just mentioned by Emily Henry, one of my favorite authors ever. So the fact that she, <laughs> this is gonna sound so fangirly, but the fact that she sits in rooms with Emily Henry has been so intimate with Emily Henry's work, it just made me think, okay, maybe they'll write similar genre books and I will naturally be a fan. And I think they do write similar genre books. It's like a contemporary romance, a girl in her... Actually, she might be in her 30s. But yeah, she's a girl in a world. She's confused about some things and she's finding love. You know, that kind of story. And that definitely is what this is. It's an enemies to lovers romance, but the enemies part is like actual enemies because Helen's sister passed away and Grant Shepard is directly the cause of that because her sister ran in front of a car and Grant Shepard was behind that car. It's not technically Grant's fault, so they never speak to each other. Obviously, Helen's parents really dislike him because... But Helen is now a best-selling author and her book got picked up to be turned into a screenplay and Grant Shepard is one of the writers in the room. So she picks up her life, goes to LA, has to work in a small room with Grant every single day and a romance starts to bloom, but it gets really complicated with Helen's parents, her difficult relationship with her mom, her difficult relationship with grief and her and Grant continue to form a situationship, which if you watch the vlog that I read this book in, the thing that I say in it is that this book made me realize that I do not like situationships or friends with benefits in books. There were so many lines that were written so well and if it had been about their actual romantic relationship would have been a super highly rated book. But because it was like this weird, they clearly like each other but then they're just saying that they don't and their actions make no sense. It wasn't romantic or cute to me at all. So I gave it three stars but so many of the lines were so beautifully written that I can tell she is gonna be a good author and whatever book she writes next I would be very curious to read. Next up I read The Villa by Rachel Hawkins which I'm so happy that I I finally read this because it's such a beautiful cover and every time I saw it at a bookstore I wanted to buy it and I just never did. So finally since I was gonna be in a beach house for a week I was like okay this looks like a beachy fun read right? It looks like a, a tropical thriller of sorts. So yeah it wasn't. It was a really great thriller. I think her writing is insanely good but this was way darker of a thriller than I was expecting which sometimes when I say that about thrillers it's kind of this intangible feeling that I can't really describe. It just was really creepy really eerie. Maybe possibly because it felt a little bit too real, but then I'll read books like House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, which people would think is pretty creepy, and I for some reason love that book, so I don't know what it was about this one in particular, but I guess it felt like that because it feels like she's writing about a true story because of the way that it flips timelines between this group of people back in the 70s who were like rock musicians who did drugs and had weird blurred lines with romances in the friend group. They stayed at this villa in Italy and then a murder took place between that friend group, and now these two friends are gonna stay in it and they're kind of discovering what happened and I liked that timeline way more because it's these two girls who are friends They're both authors, but one of them became way more famous than the other one and they kind of hate each other And that's really entertaining to read their like quippy little comebacks to each other where they're just undermining each other But then acting like they love each other. It's just entertaining It felt like a reality TV show But then we would cut back to the group of friends who stayed there in the 70s And it felt like I was reading nonfiction for a second there and those are the parts that felt so scary to me Like I couldn't read it at night type of vibe. So I ended up getting giving this three stars. I liked the reveal. I think that was done really well and I think she's an amazing author. I just didn't like half of the book because it was in a separate timeline that I didn't like and when there's only two timelines and you don't like one of them, that's kind of a lot of the book, so. I gave this one three stars. And then I read Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I got it early because of Book of the Month, which is a perk of subscribing to them. And I was so excited to read this one because first of all, I think the covers is one of the best cover reveals we've seen for any summer romance book coming out. And second of all, I read Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez last year and really enjoyed it. I read the Happy Ever After playlist the year before that and didn't enjoy it as much. It was like a three star read, but then Yours Truly was like a 4.25 star read. And so her books were kind of going up for me. So I was like, okay, this book, I have low expectations, 
but also I know she's a pretty good author so this should just be fun for my little beach house vacation and it was so fun for the beach house vacation I feel like it did such a good job of having these fun summer vibes because it's set on a really cute seeming house in the middle of a lake in Minnesota but also the romance that you get is deep and emotional and way more complex than you would think looking at this cute little cover but then it also starts out really cute because it starts off on this reddit page where this guy is talking about how he has a curse where everyone dates him right before they go on to meet the love of their life who they actually marry and this girl named Emma reads the reddit post and is like that's crazy that also happens to me so they start talking to each other and they make a joke about how if they date each other then the curse should cancel out and they'll go on to meet the love of their lives but this book was amazing I feel like every single chapter was great and there was none of the stuff that romance books that infuriate me in these pages maybe a little bit just a tiny bit but it was like understandable she committed to the bit at the end so I was like okay it didn't resolve itself in one chapter so that's a good conflict I feel like this book made me also realize that I love the trope of someone taking care of each other whenever they get sick I don't know why I just feel like that's such a real life acts of service real way to show you love someone is if you're gonna stick with them through the gross and hard things and this is definitely an acts of service man so if that's your love language I think you'll love this book and I think I gave it like 4.25 stars for this book it was so good definitely a go-to summer romance book recommendation and this is also the perfect segue because like I said this book was from book the month who is sponsoring today's video I am obsessed with them I am personally subscribed to them and speaking of getting books early I got the paradise problem by Christina Lauren early because I'm subscribed to book of the month so if you don't know what they are they're a monthly subscription service and they vet out the best books new authors you've never heard of authors you already know and love and everything in between I feel like every time I go on their website and I choose a romance or a thriller it's a guaranteed good time and I didn't have to do any of the work of like researching a book that I want to read I also got the ministry of time I think this is a time travel romance I think that's one of my favorite tropes that I just don't read enough of but I just trust them so much because I have a whole shelf of book of the month books and I have loved so many of them I love the hardcovers you can skip any month for free they're just my favorite ever and they have a limited offer for April if you click the link in my description and use code petals you can get your first book for five dollars a hardcover for five dollars crazy so yeah thank you book of the month for sponsoring this video it's only fitting that we move on to the next book that I read in April which was also a book of the month book the reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson she is the author of a good girl's guide to murder trilogy as well as five survive a good girl's guide to murder trilogy was like a six star series for me I love it so much the subplot of romance in that book amazing her main characters always have a three letter name which I just find really fun this book confirmed that she still does that it was pip in the trilogy and then it was red and then in this one it's Belle, like the end of Annabelle so this one was an insane premise it's about this girl whose mom went missing whenever she was two years old and she's the only one who ever saw it but she was two years old so of course she couldn't say what happened and she's been missing for 16 years now and they're making a documentary about it her family will get a little bit of money for doing the documentary so they agreed to do it but while they are filming it guess who reappears it's in the title so and of course you would think okay your mom's been missing for 16 years and she finally comes back everyone's gonna have a party and it's gonna be the best day ever right um no Belle is suspicious of her mom's story and doesn't necessarily believe where she was for 16 years so she starts investigating that and it becomes this beautiful 400 something page book the subplot of romance in this book was the coolest thing I've ever seen his character was like a really young Harry Styles and he's always described as wearing really weird clothing that doesn't go together and I just felt like she took a risk in writing him like that and it paid off so well because in my opinion if she wrote romance books they would be insanely good she just knows how to write these characters that feel like real people with quirks that make you fall in love with them but not for reasons that you would typically think of in a romance book but it's like a super subtle subplot so I know I'm hyping it up too much it's definitely not not a romance at all but this book had me ignoring my phone for three nights in a row where I actually by the time I would pick up my phone be like holy moly it's 11 p.m. and I haven't looked at my phone since 7 p.m. like that is how good this book was I wish I could experience it all over again honestly it was so good I feel like by the time that I got to the end of the book I was a little bit conflicted because she was doing a lot throughout the story and I was like okay how is she going to explain this what is the reveal gonna be and the reveal does get a little bit crazy where you're like okay the whole thing so far has felt grounded in reality until this point but at the same time she did everything you kind of wanted her to do so when I think about my experience of reading it as a whole and the love interest and the main character and all those things I think I would give it a 4.5 stars in my phone it says 4.25 but this book has marinated in my brain very well so 4.5 stars I highly 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 recommend this book and then I read The Blonde Identity by Allie Carter I'm glad I finally read this because I think it's a really cute cover and it's been on my shelves for a while now I wrote my entire April schedule in the back here I am silly and don't know movie references so someone commented that this title The Blonde Identity and also the whole premise of the book is based on a movie called <laughs> I'm forgetting it I don't remember The Bourne Identity as in Jason Bourne 
born. So perhaps you already know this if you know that movie, but I didn't. So it's basically a girl wakes up with amnesia, has no idea what's going on, but there are scary men chasing her. And then this guy becomes her sidekick and they go on a little mission together and it's a little romance and it's a little comedy and it's fun. And it was a fun way to pass the time, but I really don't think I'll ever think about this book again. It just was like in the moment that was great. And I'm glad for it to be over. So I gave it three stars. I wouldn't really think of it in my brain to recommend to anyone, but also if you were reading it, I wouldn't be like, oh, that's a bad book. That's all I have to say about that one. Then I read The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. It's another new release this year and I read it on my Kindle. I was really excited for this book because I have a weird relationship to Sarah Adams books. The Cheat Sheet was the first one that I ever read by her and it was like a five star read for me, I'm pretty sure. There's no spice in this one and I think it's one of the best romance books I've ever read without spice. And then when in Rome, started it and was like, this feels like it's gonna be so cheesy. Continued it, 4.5 stars. Actually loved it. And then Practice Makes Perfect, looks so cute, thought I would love it, gave it two stars. So I've been kind of all over the place with her books, but they're always just like very short, easy, fun romance reads. And the rule book was gonna be another one about a, I think he's like a tight end or something on an NFL football team. It's a made up football team though. It's called the Sharks, which I thought was funny. And it's a second chance romance, which I feel like I also love second chance romances. It started off really great and I was loving my experience reading it. And I probably was enjoying it a lot until the like 65% mark or maybe even 50. And then I feel like the book just fell off so hard and it felt so fake all of a sudden, I don't know. So then I just stopped liking it a lot. I actually started actively disliking it for some reason, but I gave it three stars because the beginning was really good and really enjoyable. Three stars is not bad. I read Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh and I'm shocked because this book, 600 pages and tiny little words, but it's okay. It's mostly dialogue. And I would say this categorizes itself as like a WAP pad writing style. Something though that I'm realizing about the Wattpad style and that people who can write good books should pay attention to is that the Wattpad writers know what scenarios to write because this book, they kiss a total of three times. The rest of it is her home life, his home life, and him picking her up from school. Honestly, that's it. It's that a million times over in 600 pages. And why is it so romantic? It's so good. You have Johnny who is a rugby superstar, but he is so talented. He's gonna go on to greatness. And then we have Shannon, but she's this petite little model looking girl, but she's been bullied all of her life. So she gets transferred to this place called Toman College. But her home life is really, really, really bad and nobody knows about it. She basically only has an older brother looking out for her, but Johnny and Shannon meet. Johnny's never been treated like he's actually more than rugby and Shannon has never been protected or cared for in her life. It's just so sweet how you see this girl who so severely needs taking care of and then you see this boy who's very popular at school making sure no one will bully her. He does everything he can to make sure she's safe as he's trying to figure out what's going on in her life. And it just was like actually very romantic. My warning over this book though is that it is Wattpad writing, which is fine if you're okay with that, but some people read it and then make fun of it, which I'm not a big fan a book is a book. Okay, it's impressive that you can write at all. And I think some people can write really beautiful prose, but the things that they write are not very romantic. Whereas this one, she knows how to write a scenario that is romantic in my opinion, but their language is also super vulgar, especially <laughs> Gibsy, this one character in the book. He just says the most outlandish things you've ever seen. And I think if you're like younger, like 13, I would not recommend this book to you, which is weird though, because it's in the young adult section when I go to Barnes and Noble. And I just kind of don't agree with that. I feel like this should be an adult just for the language alone. And also check the trigger warnings because of the things that Shannon goes through, it does just describe it on page, which is pretty hard to read. So yeah, but I did give it 4.5 stars, which is shocking to me, but I did try to read the second book and then I DNF'd it at 150 pages. So we will see if I ever pick the series up again, but I really did enjoy this first book. And then I read Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. If you don't know this author's name, he is like one of the top people in the fantasy genre right now. And this was actually a secret project that he wrote just for his wife, but then they made a Kickstarter and it was like the biggest Kickstarter campaign ever. <laughs> so people love him. And I read Mistborn by him and I really really enjoyed it. I get why he's like the top fantasy author today because his magic systems are so cool and his worlds are so imaginative and it's amazing, which is why I am sad to report that for some reason this book for me was a three star read and I honestly struggled to finish it. I just wasn't connecting to the characters and I guess I thought she was gonna get on this boat and then go somewhere else, but the whole story ended up taking place on a boat and I felt kind of claustrophobic in it, I guess. And I don't know what it was about the sentence structure being different or something, but it just felt so clunky when I was trying to read it in my brain. I just couldn't, it was not flowing for me. I don't know what that was. <laughs> and I read these two books back to back and I read a comment that was like, you rating a Wattpad book higher than the Brandon Sanderson one broke my heart, but 
I don't know, man. I just was not connecting to the characters and the story, even though I loved the themes of the story. If you like the movie Princess Bride, that's what this story is inspired by. Apparently, I need to watch that movie. I feel like I have watched that movie. I just don't remember. I'm just really, really, really bad with movies. But yeah, this was a three-star read for me. Don't know what happened. And then I read a novella from Ali Hazelwood's little bind-up of three novellas in here. I read the first one like two years ago, and then I wanted to just buy this one so that I could read it in between things that felt like were putting me into a slump. This felt like it was putting me into a slump. So I read Stuck With You, which is the novella in the middle of this book, and I actually gave it four stars. I really liked it. Although they are stuck in an elevator together, and that scares me because I'm actually really scared of that happening to me one day. I'm just so obsessed with her writing. I don't know. Something about the way that she describes characters is perfect, and the scenarios are perfect. I think she's so funny. They're so bingeable. It's just exactly what I was craving, so I gave it four stars, and they all have spice in them, so keep that in mind. And I have one more novella before I'm done with this entire little bind-up. And then I ended the month with Funny Story by Emily Henry, her new book. If you're not aware, I am a massive Emily Henry fan. Beach Read is like imprinted on my heart and brain because it's like the first romance book I read in my adulthood that really started this uh, entire library pretty much. So very special place in my heart. And this one was really interesting and fun. I think comparing it to New Girl is like the best comparison ever because basically these two very unlikely people are living together because both of their partners kind of basically cheated and are now together. So she has to move out of the house that she was living in. She was engaged to this man. She has to move out last second, obviously. So she moves in with Miles, who is also heartbroken and they have this thing to bond over kind of, but they also have like nothing in common. So they're just kind of awkward roommates for a while. And she's a librarian. She really loves her job, which I thought that was really cool too. I feel like the professions that Emily Henry has been choosing for her main characters has been really cool. Like in Happy Place, she's a doctor. I just really liked that she was a librarian in this one, but you actually get to see a lot of her work life and how much she loves it. Like reading the stories to the kids was the highlight of her week. And she navigates becoming friends with someone when she is typically very closed off because she moved a lot in her childhood. And I think a lot of her backstory just felt real to me. And all of that stuff was just so relatable. And I was shocked for sure that Miles was the love interest. I was like, oh, okay, this is definitely interesting. I like that he was charismatic and everyone in the town loved him and that he was just really nice. I feel like we need more romance books where the main character is just actually nice. That's why I liked better than the movies. Every time she comes up with a new book, I immediately want to reread it. And I haven't reread any of them except for Beach Read. So I am feeling the urge soon to pick up another one of her books and just reread it. It was five stars for me. Child, my baby. I think if there are any books in this video that you should actually read, it would be these three books right here were my favorites this month for sure. These two for sure, for sure. And two of these were from Book of the Month, which is not even being told to say that. It's just true. But thank you, Book Month, for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to use that code in the link to the description. Five dollars. That's crazy. Those are the 10 books that I read this month. Let me know, oh gosh, your favorite book that you read this month. And this is my TBR shelf. So if you ever see anything up there that you're like, Haley, you really need to read that. Let me know. I will see you guys on Instagram, main channel, or somewhere else on the internet. Bye.